Francisco for the end zone. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Trap those hair under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. Again, they'll throw a car. And that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. From the gun, it's Carr. He's going deep for Brown. And then it's dropped. Oh, my goodness. That could have been a game changer, but he could not hang on. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There's pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Here's A.J. Colbell as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. This one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and ten at their own 20-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You take in charge. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Garoppolo going to give to Mostert. A gain of three, second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. Now they'll throw with Garoppolo. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 13 yards there, the Niner first. Now Garoppolo. Now Garoppolo is in trouble and down he goes. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yards, but right there they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play. They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. They hand it off to Mostert. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. The Niners on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This will be third and a mile. That's in the hands of Dwelly. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Here comes the 49ers punter now. As he'll come on to kick this one away. And this will be taken at the 13. It's a 45-yard punt and eight on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. He'll let this go deep for runs. Believe it, he will make the catch. Typically with catches like that, we talk about the height of the wide receiver, but he's one of the shorter receivers in the NFL. And it doesn't seem to matter, does it? Put the tape measure away. How about some of these guys under six feet tall? Antonio Brown, T.Y. Hilton, and Super Bowl 53 MVP, Julian Edelman. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. Here's Carr. And incomplete on the deep ball. I remember Coach told me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Corner is like the auto bomb. Everybody's just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In today's football, the receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage. When you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Here's a handoff to Jacobs, and he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. 111 yards on the ground for him now as he's gotten better, really, as the night's going on. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. He got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Now they work on first and ten. Carr, a handoff here to Drake. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. The last run got six, now second and four. Carr defers to Jacobs on the draw, and they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. The Raiders on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This time they face a third and two. Now Carr. And this is going to be intercepted. Knew it. I knew it. I knew it.
the ground. It's Mostert to start the drive. And it's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 13 yards there and a Niner first. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Mostert. And he'll get this up to about the 40. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. From the gun, a run with Mostert. And he's going to have a Niners first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. Taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line.